How are we doing guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my 10 tips for new drivers. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe for plenty more videos just like it and much much more. Right let's jump into it. Tip number one remember the six P's proper planning prevents piss poor performance. So that means plan everything down to the T. So you know where you're going, you want to plan your fuel stops if you're going to need fuel stops, you want to plan your rest stops, you want to plan your route, you want to plan the entering of the place you're going into, you want to plan uh, if you're going to be entering a big city, usually big cities you can't take breaks so you want to take breaks before you go into the city. You've got any number of apps that you can use. You can use a trucking atlas, you can use your sat nav, you can use Google Maps and there's apps that are dedicated to planning journeys so you can put in all your stops and to the best of your ability you need to mitigate anything going wrong on your journey. Tip number two know your height always check everything especially if you're taking different trailers you're taking plant around you're using a flatbed where you're going to have various heights of loads all the time always measure always be 100 percent knowing what the height of your vehicle is it's so important do not rely on the height indicator inside your cab because someone could have messed with it, something could have changed with the load, you could have a different trailer on there. You especially want to take care if you are a tipper, you want to make sure that your body is always down and seated as far as it can go. If you're a plant driver, you want to make sure that the arms on any diggers or excavators are stretched out as far as they can go, make sure nothing is going to make any contact with any bridges. You want to not rely 100% on your sat nav. Sat navs are not infallible and they do make mistakes and bridge heights can be wrong. Um, you find 90% of the time they're right but it's always worth double checking if you've got a low bridge on your route. And be wary of bridge markings as well especially if you're tight to the bridge. If you've only got a couple of inches then you really need to proceed with caution. You need to crawl under that bridge if you're not familiar with it. It could have been within six months that they've resurfaced the road and they've not altered the bridge height. So if you've only got a couple of inches to play with you're unlucky and you need to proceed with caution. Tip number three, always expect the unexpected. If it can happen, it will happen. With experience, the unexpected becomes the expected. Motorists will do anything to get in front of you. For instance, you'll just get to learn the signs of what people are doing. When you're approaching a junction on a motorway, you look in the mirror, you see a fast car approaching from behind you, he's switching from lane three to lane two. You can almost guarantee that just at the junction he's going to swerve in front of you and use the slip road. So it's just little things like that that you get used to, that you learn to read and you expect the unexpected. Tip number four, fatigue and driving tired. Best thing you can do, heating off, wind the window down for a supply of fresh air, whack your radio up and that should help you out for a little while. Other things you can do is pull over, have a bit of a walk around, have a cup of coffee, worst comes to the worst, have a 10-15 minute power nap. Always remember to drink plenty of water, you'll be surprised how much drinking water will work wonders for you. Tip number five, load security. Always check your load. Even if it's not you that's loaded it and strapped it down, always walk around and do a check of your load. Make sure that everything's secure, all the straps are tight, make sure that any excess is tied up and out of the way, it's not going to undo and be dragging it down the motorway. Remember it's always a driver's responsibility once they leave the yard and drive out on the public road, no matter who's loaded it, no matter who's strapped it or secured it, 
it's always the driver's responsibility if anything falls off or anything happens with your load after you've done five ten miles it's always good practice to pull over check your load retighten any straps um, you've got to allow that with the movement of the truck any load is going to bed in and settle itself down a few of your straps or your chains are going to going to need putting some tension back on there again so it's always good practice to do that and it's always a really good idea that whenever you stop for a break you stop for a 15 30 minute break 45 minute break in the services or a lay by just have a walk around check your straps make sure they're still tight make sure that nothing's looking a bit dodgy it's falling over it's displaced it's moved and you should be good to go tip number five watch your tail swing if you're making a tight turn you always want to make sure that you leave a couple of feet on the opposite side that you're making the turn to. I know it's quite difficult sometimes because you want to use as much swing as you can to make sure that you make the, the uh, but you've also got to be aware that your tail is going to swing out and there's a great possibility that it's going to catch something and you don't want to do what this guy done. Tip number seven, vehicle check. Don't get complacent. It's easy when it's dark, cold, frosty morning, freezing cold, pouring down with rain, wet and windy. It's easy just to sit in your cab and go tip, yep, tip, yep, tip, yep, tip, yep, tip, and not actually check. It's not a practice that you want to get into. If you drive down the road and a wheel falls off, hits somebody's car, kills them, it's your responsibility, nobody else's. You'll be the one in court, you'll be the one going to prison. Always make sure that you thoroughly do your walk around checks. Tip number eight, entertainment. In this industry, there's a lot of waiting around. You can be waiting around for hours to be loaded, you can wait around for hours to be tipped, you can wait around for hours in traffic, you can wait around for hours in accidents. Always make sure that you've got some form of entertainment. I always have a tablet with me that I can watch TV on. A lot of drivers, if they're in a permanent vehicle, will buy a, a cheap 24 volt or 12 volt TV. All you've got to do then is buy a, a cheap aerial. You can slip it up on the cab, you can watch TV. Especially if you're tramping, you're out in the evenings, you're going to want something to keep you occupied for a few hours before you go and get your head down. One thing I will highly advise is an unlimited data plan. That's what I've got. It's made my life in the cab so much nicer. I don't have to worry about any data that I use. I'm not limited to listening to the rubbish radio and the rubbish stations we have on there. I've got hundreds and hundreds of internet radio stations that I can listen to. I've got audio books that I can listen to. And in the evening, I can stream live TV through it, watch films. I can use the um, Amazon Prime service. There's just hundreds. I can YouTube anything. I've just got so much now that keep me occupied and I don't have to worry about it. And like I say, when you're driving, you've got so much that you can uh, you can set it up before you start off, put it on a radio station. There's just hundreds and hundreds that you can listen to and there's something for everyone. Now, I'm on a SIM only plan. I kept my old phone after the contract on that run out. Didn't see any point in updating it, no big... Uh, changes with phones the last couple of years so I've kept my phone that the contract went out on I went to an unlimited plan uh, un unlimited data unlimited calls unlimited text sim only 30 pounds a month so that's less than what I was pay paying on my old plan with my phone and not only that but if a European uh, tramping then those free minutes free data and free texts are available in 71 different countries as well so you won't crack up a big bill. Tip number nine is your health and exercise. When you finish your shift, it's really important to get out, have a stretch, get the blood flowing again. The minimum that you wanna do really is have a 30 minute walk around. It doesn't hurt, even if it's just around the services, have, do a couple of laps around the perimeter of the services, half hour, 20 minutes, just to get your muscles working again, your blood flowing, get, your, get some air into your lungs, and just make yourself feel better. It's really not healthy for you 
to be sat down for long periods of time behind the wheel and then literally roll from your seat into your bed. You're not getting any exercise, you're not doing anything, you're going to drastically reduce your life expectancy and you're going to lead to a lot of health problems. Another thing that you can do is when you stop at the services, don't look for the nearest spot to the services. Park at the, as far away as you can. That way you, you'll be able to find uh, better and easier parking spaces. And then when you do walk to the services, and there you've got yourself a little bit of exercise, you've stretched your legs, you've got your muscles working. Tip number 10 is ask. If you're not sure about anything, ask somebody. There's no such thing as a silly question, and the only silly question is the one that's not asked. Any drivers or any yard will be more than happy to answer any questions or any concerns that you have. Remember that once you take that truck out on the road, it's your responsibility. So if you're not sure of anything, make sure that you ask the question. And it doesn't matter how small it is or how insignificant you might think it is. If it's a concern of yours, ask somebody. And that is my 10 top tips for new HGV drivers. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you found it helpful. If you'd like some more tips on landing your first job, I have a video and you'll be able to find it by clicking the link just up here. If you have any tips yourself, it would be really good if you could leave them in the comments. Maybe we'll be able to help somebody else out. Thank you once again for watching. It's been great having you. It's been great making this video for you. And I shall see you on the next one. Cheers!